So when it comes to picking a cable piece for your home gym, there are several important factors to consider. Things like how big is it? How expensive is it? What sort of versatility or functionality does it have? What kind of weight ratio or ratios does it offer? And do I get a full range of motion? Within the broader cable piece market, you have products ranging from functional trainers to single columns to lat pull down low rows, all the way down to the more economical rack attached single pulleys, all of which vary in budget and in features. Well, today we're gonna to be taking a look at the new kit on the block. This is the universal pulley system from Surplus Strength. We'll be going into great detail and by the end of this review, you should be able to decide if it's right for you. More on that, coming up. Hey, what's up friends? I'm glad you're here because today is yet another perfect day to talk about gym equipment. Hey guys, my name is Adam with Garage Gym Lab and if you're new here, this channel is all about testing and reviewing gym equipment, building the home gym community, and providing inspiration to anybody out there who's looking to build their dream gym. So if that's something you're into, I definitely encourage you to subscribe. That way you can stay up to date with all the weekly content. Here, ladies and gentlemen, we have the Universal Pulley System, AKA the UPS from Surplus Strength. This is a product that was recently released back in February of 2021, although I've had it in my gym now since early October of 2020 as an early tester and to provide some initial feedback to Surplus Strength. Here on this side, we've got the high pulley, and on this side, we've got the low row foot attachment. This low row was actually recently released. I just got it in myself, and I wanted to wait a little bit on this review so that I had an opportunity to properly use this and get my thoughts together. So as you may have seen, this is a rack mounted pulley system, and it's one that I think is really cleverly designed and serves a real need. Not without some caveats to be sure, but all of which we will discuss in this review. But before we do that, let's have a quick primer on cable pieces. Let's look at some of the most common types and some of those most important factors to consider. We'll tackle those from most expensive down to least expensive, and then we'll get into the review. So on the high end of the spectrum, you have your functional trainer. If you've ever trained in a commercial gym, you've probably used one. They're very versatile, they allow for cross-body movements, and they can be adjusted at various heights. Typically speaking, they are the largest as it relates to cable pieces, not including full-blown cable crossovers, and generally they are among the most expensive, ranging anywhere from a couple thousand dollars to well above 5K in some cases. While functional trainers are great, they are limited in their weight capacity, not just in their stacks, assuming that they have one, but also in the ratios that they commonly use, which is two to one or four to one. In the case of a two to one ratio, what that means is if I select 100 pounds on the functional trainer, I will feel 50 pounds. And in the case of a four to one ratio, I will feel 25 pounds. Beyond that, the biggest limitation is with the lat pull itself, because most users can't get a full range of motion given the height of the highest pulley setting. A little less expensive than the functional trainer, at least in most cases, is the single column. I personally own the Prime Fitness Selectorized Single Stack, which is fantastic. If you'd like, you can check out my video review of that piece right there. But essentially what a single stack is, is it's one half of a functional trainer. So some of those same limitations that exist on a functional trainer also exist on a single stack, except for the fact that you get a little bit of space savings and except for the case of the Prime Fitness piece, which offers several distinct advantages. I won't go into detail on that in this video, but certainly check out the other one if you're interested in learning more. You can also buy wall mounted single stacks, which are great and which can be had for really good prices, but which also have some of those same limitations. Below the single stack, you have your lat pull down and low row. This takes up roughly the same amount of square footage. And while it's not as versatile as a single stack and that you don't get an adjustable pulley, it does have at least one advantage in that you get a one-to-one -one ratio, which is exactly what you want on a lat pull down and low row. And lastly, you have your rack attached pulley system. This can include things like the Pulley Pro, it can be a very simple DIY solution, or it can be something a little bit more polished like the Rogue Slinger, which interestingly enough has shown very little promise, at least until recently when they finally started hinting at some pretty cool features like an adjustable trolley and like some on rack attachments like what you would find on the Prime piece. The UPS fits in this category, but there are some very noteworthy features that we will go through in this video. If you guys have any questions or comments on cable pieces, especially as it relates to the home gym, definitely drop them down below. 
But with that, let's go ahead and move into the review of the UPS. So currently the UPS is available for three by three racks with either one inch or five eighth inch holes and two inch spacing on center. If you have a two by three rack, however, don't worry, there's gonna be an adapter. It's not out yet, but it will be soon. And that's essentially just going to be some extra UHMW to fill in that gap and accommodate your smaller rack width. Speaking of UHMW, both the low row and the high pulley include a nice UHMW lining with a very tight tolerance. In fact, it's so tight that I'm afraid even one more millimeter on my low row would not allow it to fit on my rack. This is great for preventing any unnecessary movement, but it may require a little bit of extra elbow grease in order to get it into position. As you may have noticed on my high pulley, I do not have UHMW. That is only because this was the first unit before UHMW was considered. Surplus Strength and I had talked about this and now it's offered as standard, which is a great feature because not only does it protect your rack's finish, but again, it does prevent any unnecessary wobble. One thing you may have noticed is that the entire system is very low profile, meaning you won't be adding much, if any, height to your rack. Because this bracket cradles the cross member, the only real concern you have in terms of an, a, an elevation change is this top portion of the pulley, which equates to about one inch. And even that's gonna be limited to certain rack owners. So if you have a Rogue Monster rack or a Sorenex Base Camp, where the cross members are in line with your uprights, then you're gonna be adding you know, this little piece right here. Otherwise, if you have something like the Rogue Monster Lite, the Rep PR5000, Rep PR4000, Rep Omni, Sornex XL, Frey Savage, etc., where the cross members actually sit a little bit beneath the uprights, then you won't be adding any height to your rack. Compare that to the Rogue Slinger, which adds a whopping seven inches of height to any rack, and you can see where this could be pretty meaningful for some users, depending on their racks and their overall ceiling allowance. One other thing to note is that you can either side mount the UPS or you can mount it off the front or the back depending on your preferences and your rack setup. I found it to be a little bit more functional to side mount it, I'll detail that momentarily. But if you're gonna be using the low row attachment, you really need to do that anyway. Otherwise you would need to have some sort of a low rear stabilizer off the back of your rack. Now I do think that most people are gonna be leaving these on their racks permanently and then just kind of moving the cable away when they're not using it. But if you did wanna disassemble it, take it off your rack when you're not using it, then you can easily do that and store it pretty inconspicuously given the fact that it is relatively small and it just uses hitch pins to attach to your rack. In terms of the materials, the frame is constructed with 11 gauge steel. Everything you see and receive is sourced in the US, fabricated in the US, and assembled in the US. The frame is welded, you can buy this in a variety of different colors, and the assembly process itself is very minimal. All it takes is pushing through a few bolts to those pulleys, and then installing this little roller pin to make sure that the cable is routed nicely. As I mentioned, these do use hitch pins to attach to your rack. And as you'll see, there is a round hole and there is an oblong hole. This is by design, and this is something that Surplus Strength and I discussed at length, because as you'll see on my original unit, this is the high pulley, it actually uses two round holes. Now, two round holes is great if you have a rack that is truly three by three with one inch holes and two inch spacing on center, like a Rogue rack or like a Sornex rack. When you start looking at imported racks, however, which use a metric system like the Rep PR5000, well, those hole sizes are slightly smaller. So while you be able to get that first pin in, the spacing is thrown a little bit off and you won't be able to get that second pin in. And since there's nothing worse than not being able to get it in, this oblong hole solves that and accommodates those small deviations. Now, arguably one of the best features of the UPS high pulley is that it has dual pulleys. One of the biggest downsides of traditional economy style rack attached pulleys is they're oftentimes just a single pulley, which can cause a lot of plate sway. If that plate sway gets out of control, which is pretty easy to do without modification from a band or something like that, then it can really throw things off and it can cause the movement to not only be very awkward, but it can also cause those weights to swing into your equipment and potentially cause some damage. But it's not enough to just have dual pulleys. The main benefit here is that there's some length between them. And what that does is it eliminates a lot of the plate sway because the cable isn't being influenced in the same way, nor is it as sensitive to movement. 
Now, there is still gonna be some sway in the system. It's not completely avoidable. And if you're going crazy on it, it will get out of control all the same, but it does do a good job of reducing the sway. I'll give you a few examples. On the left side of the screen, I'll show you what it looks like under normal circumstances. And on the right side of the screen, I'll purposely try to produce some sway to give you an idea of what that looks like. So as you can see, it's not completely devoid of sway, but it really is quite manageable and it's a huge improvement over traditional single pulley systems. As we talk about cables, these are one quarter inch thick and surplus will guarantee it to 300 pounds, although it's rated to hold in excess of 600 pounds. It is very important to get the length of this cable correct because if it's too short you're going to have to be testing your grip strength to bring the loading pin up to the carabiner and conversely if it's too long then you risk not getting a full range of motion on your lap pull down or other movements surplus will custom cut your cable based on your cross member height so you'll need to provide that to them when you order the ups my rack for example is 96 inches tall but my cross member is about 92 inches which translates to a cable length of just over 114 inches which is great because that allows it to hit that loading pin perfectly with minimal slack which gives me full stretch on my lat pull down triceps push downs and any other movement that i'm trying to do off the high pulley each of the high pulley and the low pulley come with two carabiners each for a total of four if you get the whole setup the low pulley cable attaches to the high pulley cable via one of those carabiners. And just like the high pulley, this low foot attachment is constructed with 11 gauge steel and it sits over top of that cross member for again, a very low profile fit. Now, depending on the height of your bottom cross member, there may be a gap between the floor and the bottom of this unit, or it might sit flush. I could move my bottom cross members down some, but I've chosen not to, and here's why. This front edge is seven inches tall. So even at my current cross member height, it only goes up to about eight and a half inches off the ground. Now, as I mentioned in my recent review of the Gungnir Dumblers, I actually have pretty big feet. Despite only being five foot eight, I wear upwards of an 11 and a half shoe. So yes, ladies, what you heard is true. I do wear big socks. What that means is there is some foot overhang here. I like having my whole foot on the foot plate, especially the balls of my feet. So if you look at something like the Prime Fitness low foot attachment, that is a height of about 13 inches. So you can see where the UPS is roughly half of that in terms of foot coverage. I don't think this is a deal breaker by any means. I mean, we're not trying to generate leg drive here, but it is noticeable to me and it does feel a bit weird. If Surplus can figure out a way to increase the height of this, which might require some structural stability, then I think it could make a big difference for some users. Now, one of the things I do really appreciate about this low foot attachment is this front edge, which has a grip tape similar to what you would find on like a skateboard. And it does a really good job of keeping your feet firmly in place. And I like the fact that it's totally flat versus something like a raised diamond pattern on the prime piece or some other low foot attachments. Okay, so let's talk about some of the ways that you can use the UPS and some of the limitations with it. I mentioned earlier that my recommendation is to side mount the UPS. And I think that most people will because it does limit depth requirements. But the real reason why I recommend that is it gives you more options when it comes to lower body stabilization. For example, you can put your feet underneath your bottom cross member, or you can put your legs underneath your safeties both of which work really well. Yes, you can use leg rollers inside of your rack or possibly even off the front of your rack, depending on your rack setup and if you have four-way hold safeties. And while you do get more control this way, it is an extra step in the process because you have to do it on both sides. Generally speaking, when it comes to lower body stabilization, this is a limitation with the UPS, especially as compared to a standalone unit, which offers thigh pads as standard and it doesn't require you to have to move the cable around in order to actually use your rack. 
Now, there is a scenario where it actually does make perfect sense to either front mount or back mount your UPS, and that's if you have a rogue Rhino either inside of your rack or behind it. The great thing about the UPS is it's built to actually accommodate that, so you can actually hook into your Rhino or even the Squat Max and use the weight that way. Keep in mind that Squat Max rack mounted units are not being manufactured right now and they're currently in unicorn status. I think that most people are gonna be using the UPS for a few popular movements. Lat pull downs and low rows, certainly, but also things like triceps push downs, triceps extensions, bicep curls, upright rows, etc. And I think it does a really nice job at these movements, especially given the footprint. Now, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen my new favorite hack. Any parents out there, if you've got a nugget couch, well, congratulations, because now you've got a preacher curl and it happens to pair really nicely with the surplus strength low row. That said, there are some other limitations here. Firstly is your rack height. In order to get the most out of the UPS, you really need to have a rack with some decent height. I'd say anywhere from 85 to 90 inches and above is really the sweet spot. That way you can get a full range of motion on your lat pull. Anything less, and depending on what type of attachments you're using, you may find that you're not getting a full stretch. Another limitation with the UPS is that it's not as versatile as something like a single column, like a functional trainer, et cetera. And considering the price of this unit, it may be something where people are looking at it and saying, I can save a bit more money and possibly get something standalone. Then again, this does offer a one-to-one -one ratio. You do get a full range of motion, again, depending on your rack height, and it is a much smaller footprint. To wrap up a couple other small items, both the high pulley and the low row do include some really nice cosmetic touches, including this steel overlay and these laser cutouts. You can get the UPS standard in black or red, or you can pay a little bit extra and get a custom color like this white, which I think is beautiful and really accents my rack really nicely. Another cool thing is you can actually get colored hitch pins, which is a great and pretty unique touch since most companies only offer single options being red or black, which may clash with what you have going on scheme-wise. Surplus Strength will also warranty all of these welds for a lifetime, as well as five years on the pulleys. With regards to price, this is a premium priced product. The high pulley goes for $400 and the low pulley goes for $200. So to get the whole kit and caboodle, you'll be in for 600 bucks. Surplus is sort of taking the go strong approach where it's high quality, high prices, pay it or don't, we know who we are. And on one hand, I really appreciate that approach, but on the other hand, I can see where the average home gym owner may have some reservations on spending that much. So are the benefits enough to justify the cost? Well, it depends on you, of course, but I will say that this does offer some great variety. It's compact, it's heavy duty, it offers a one-to-one -one ratio, and it offers several distinct advantages over traditional, more economical style single pulleys. And I think that it's a nice offering overall. So what do you guys think of the UPS? Is it a cool product? Is it worth the price? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Until then, be well and we'll chat soon. Bye.